There is SOLIDWORKS and there is 3D experience. There are differences between these two software, even though they are merging together every year more and more. I wanted to share five quick tips to get you started with 3D experience because there are not many tutorials on the internet. I thought it's time to help you with that. If you are moving towards that or if you're starting with this software for its advantages over SOLIDWORKS, they're super similar, but there are some advantages to it, such as the X shape, which is what I have opened on my computer. So first thing first, I'm working with a 3D connection enterprise, no sponsorship or whatever here. It's really helpful when I work with SOLIDWORKS. I realized it works on 3D experience. If you have the space mouse already open and running, then you open the software. If you open the 3D experience, then your uh, space mouse, the only thing you can do is just zoom in and zoom out. And that bugs me. Let me just close the software, reopen it again, see if we can fix this issue. Look, now it works. If you would like to take advantage of your space mouse, make sure to have it turned on, then go to 3D experience. As I said, five quick tips to get you started. Over here in the subdivision task, you have a bunch of volumes that you can add box and I'm not going to read the rest only and only work with box or cylinder. Preferably do not work with the rest because further down the line, your mesh is going to face some issues. What I mean by that is when you bring a box in and press enter, everything ends up symmetrically and clean. The meshes are not going to end up into a single point. Any shape other than cylindrical or box, some of the surfaces end up in a single point and that single point could create complexities in your geometry. So my first tip for you is regardless of the geometry you want to go for, pick box or cylinder, the one that is closer to the one you want to build. Over here, I opened up box and I just immediately pressed enter. This is another tip. Press enter so your box is fixed on the coordinate automatically. Now I can just click the green check mark and continue. But before I do that, I can change the number of sections on my box. The fewer, the better. You want to have the minimum number of mesh on your volume and further down the line, if it needs to have more, we can always create more, but we don't want to start with a lot because this box is very similar to a spline, a 2D spline when you work with it in Bezier Curves in SOLIDWORKS or in any other software for that matter. I would like to actually draw a spline. Again, just like that, when you want to work with spline, you want to work with the minimum number of points, control points, because right now I have two and I can just, you know, bend this in almost any curve that I want. And it's very, very flexible and it gives me everything. But if I want to create a spline that has so many points, it's very difficult to control the spline because there are so many points to control. And same thing happens here, only with surfaces and volume because it's 3D. So you want to have the minimum number of mesh that you want to have. Not one, but at least if two by two by two works, go with that. Then you can immediately have the rough geometry of the thing you want to have. For example, I would like to have three by two by three, not this one, this one, to create something like a bike seat for the sake of the example. All right. I don't know how many points it was to this point, but there were like two or three. Another point is how to select and drag the points. I can just select a point and drag it like this. Select it and drag it with this robot that appears. But if you pay attention to this robot, it's normal to my selection and it's random. It's neither in the direction of XYZ or anything else. To have it in the right direction, this is the next tip, right click and click on XYZ. Now, every time I click on any point, I get the standard directions of X, Y, and Z on my robot and I can just drag that point in that direction. All right. We can also box select our points all together to have it like this, right? And since a bike seat in this example is symmetrical, we would like to have a mirror line activated. How do we do that? It's over here. And the way it works is that you have to define enough references for it to know where the line should go through. If I select this line and this point, it would create a symmetrical plane like this. And this is not what I want. So instead, I would just select this line and this point to have the green line going all over my volume like this. So every time I change anything on the right, it reflects it on the left like this. Now I want to box select all of these, except I don't want to have those two selected. So changing the angle helps. Box select these, move them outward like that. And then maybe box select these, push them in. Now it's more like a bike seat, more or less. Almost we have the base. Now we can also click on the surface to have it perpendicularly shown on my screen. And then box select these, move them up like that, box select these, move them up like this, okay? And we can also select a line 
or double click on it to have it looped and then click on the loop. But we don't want to do that. Instead, I want to select this and this holding control key down to multiple select. And I want to push it a little bit in now. Okay. Next tip is for quick working with the software, I can select a series of surfaces as a loop, either in this direction or in this direction. As you can see, my left hand is here and I'm just clicking on the mouse. What happens is if you pay attention to a certain, to a given area like this one, I'm just uh, bring it on the screen and this is my marker. If I double click on this area, which is a little bit toward to the right, what happens is it would highlight this surface all around this area. Similarly, if I just go ahead and double click here towards that end, it would just highlight this area all around, okay? So it's always like this. If I just double click here, it highlights that loop. If I double click here, it highlights this loop. So for working faster, it is important where you click, where you double click. I don't want to do that just now. It was just a tip on its own. Okay, let's talk about subsectioning and a given area like this one. This is one single mesh. And let's say I wanted to subdivide this mesh further down into smaller areas or this loop for that matter. I want to split it in two. Maybe in the beginning, the box was three by two by two. And now I realized I need three by three by three. So we want to add more. And the tool for that is here. It's called insert loops. If I click on that and click on a given line, it just creates a loop around it. This yellow highlight that you see, ignore the second one. The second one is activated because the mirror is activated. So whatever we do on the right takes place on the left too. So it's splitting this line perfectly in the middle and it adds a loop to that. But what if I don't want to have it perfectly in the middle? What if I wanted to have it more towards the middle and not towards the left? This is a very important tip. It's not only for this tool. Whenever you have your mirror tool activated, some of the other tools don't perform normally. So let to just make my point, I want to cancel this and deactivate the mirror line. The green line goes away. And again, I want to click on insert loop. And this time, if I click here, not only I can just move where I want the loop to be inserted, you can see that I'm just moving it towards left and left and left and more. I can also increase the number of loops I want to add and like this, and I can click OK. Now, at this point, if I want to have it mirrored, I can activate the mirror line again. So as I said, Let's just rotate this, this line and this point would do. And then boom, it just adds exactly what I want to the other side. Now I want to push this a little bit further down. So what I do is I can just either click on the surface, push it down, but it pushes everything down. So I don't want to do that. There are so many other tools that we can use. In this case, I want to do something like this and then push that down. It subdivides it and pushes it down like this. It's more like a bike seat more or less now. So that's that. The other tip, which is very important, is that you need to know what you are looking at at a given time. This is called a surface, right? This is our volume. This is the final output. But we can also change between the cage view, the body view, and cage and surface. You can see the surface is inside this cage. And this cage, which is see-through right now, is basically like those controlling points on our spline. So if I click on this point and drag it up, you can see the effect it has on the body inside it. If I want to bring it up like this, we can see what's going on. And believe me, a lot of times it helps to only work on the cage because it just gives you a different perspective and it gives you more control over the body. It's only the view, but it gives you more control. Another thing you can see here is that this curvature on the inside on the body is a little bit higher than the rest of the body because the point on the cage is pulled up and this is towards that. Now, but it's not filling the cage. Similarly on the back, there are some gaps over here between the body and the cage. If you want to push the body towards the edge of the cage and fill the cage, there is a feature called crease and the crease edges. And it's over here. If I select my surface, you can see that it is pushed down to the cage. Let's just select the rest so you see. And it's a perfect flat surface. Let's just go to the body. Look, it's absolutely flat. If I export this component and bring it in SOLIDWORKS, it's so flat, I can just immediately draw a, a 2D sketch on it and apply any SOLIDWORKS feature to it. 
I want. In fact, this is one of the most important points for 3D experience tools for XJAPE is that it's so compatible with SOLIDWORKS. You can just take care of your organic geometries, then export it and bring it to SOLIDWORKS and add all the tubings and uh, bolts and nuts that you want and create an actual bike seat or whatever you want to model from it. I recommend you to start working with the software because it opens your hands and you can start modeling organic geometries that are very difficult to model in SOLIDWORKS. I just did that in a couple of minutes without thinking about it, without planning and without preparation. But if I wanted to do that with SOLIDWORKS using Loft, I had to sit down and think about where do I begin, what kind of profiles I need and how to loft this and so on and so forth. It's an expansion to your abilities when you're working with Dassault System SOLIDWORKS. All right, I have about 8,000 students from all over the world who are learning SOLIDWORKS from age 18 all the way to age 85. I think the oldest member I have is 85, but he's not the only one over 80. I have many people over 80. So the range is quite big. What they have in common is that they are very enthusiastic about 3D modeling or a good portion of them are mechanical engineers. Many of them are in aerospace engineering. Some of them are creating their own airplane, welding, sheet metals, manufacturing, packaging industry, and all that. So you might have your own reason to start learning SOLIDWORKS but whatever it is there are certain essentials that you need to have before you focus on your niche if you want to design sheet metal you need to know the essentials first if you want to work with weldments create gates chassis if you want to do simulations if you want to work with x design you need to know your essentials first it is very important to know the essentials essentials is like a trunk of the tree and then later on you can just branch out into your specific niche for that i have a course that starts from scratch and and creates the strongest foundation for your solidworks essentials you can check it here it's solidworkstutorials.net basically you can see what's included in my course you can see how long it is you can see how much it is you can read the reviews you can see everything that comes with it you can see the bonuses so if you are serious about learning solidworks check out my course and check out the reviews okay there are thousands of people in this course it has been around for more than four years and it's not going to disappoint you you're going to love it it's the investment you want to do on yourself so that's that if you want me to cover any specific topic please comment it below this video i will read your comments and i will answer it as much as i can if you haven't subscribed to my channel feel free to do so i'm very happy to share my knowledge with you and i'll see a lot of you hopefully in february in the 3d experience world 2020 25 in i think houston texas and yeah that's that if you want to learn about solidworks essentials the desktop version click on the video on the right and if you want to learn about the 3d experience the online version click on the video on the left